Andam Yake Mwakaliele. Andam Vincent Macquarie. We begin in South Africa where the nation is reeling following Thursday's deadly clashes between police and striking workers armed with machetes and sticks at a platinum mine. South Africa's police ministry says at least 30 people were killed when officers opened fire on the workers in one of the most violent security operations of the post-apartheid era. President Jacob Zuma cut short a trip to Mozambique to return to the country and travel to the mine. Nearly 3,000 people have walked off the job this week in a wage dispute at Lomnin PLC mine, located about 120 kilometers northwest of Johannesburg. Lomnin issued a statement Thursday warning workers they would be fired if they did not return to work by today. Some strikers were armed earlier this week, but it is unclear if they triggered Thursday's violence. Now, prior to yesterday's deadly clash, 10 people, including two police officers, had been killed in violence related to the mine strike. Lon Min is the world's third largest platinum producer. For more now on the fluid and extremely troublesome situation, we are joined by journalist Isaka Homo of the South Africa Broadcasting Corporation. Hello, Isaka. Welcome to InFocus. Thank you very much. Now, what is the latest on the situation there at the mine? Well, the lead of the mine, uh, uh, the situation is tense and the mine is shut down. Uh, there's no production in any of the shops and also in other uh, long mine mines around the country. Now, really, how did things get to that point where there's such a shootout between the, the protesters and the police? Well, basically, it's due to a process of errors and uh, the whole thing was not properly uh, administered. Uh, as the report said, uh, the trouble started last week where there was a clash between two opposing my, uh, unions. Basically, there's a new union which has come up which has been very, very um, vocal and radical in its demand. They've been demanding that the minimum wage should actually be pushed up to 12,000 rands, which is equivalent to 1,500 US dollars per month. That's for the lowly paid workers. Now, the classical, the uh, traditional union, which is the National Union of Mine Workers, they were not happy with that, this other upstart union coming in, and there was a clash between those two unions, which resulted in the death of 10 people, including two policemen who were hacked to death. So, but ever since last Friday, there's been a sitting uh, out of the mine area by a group of workers belonging to the new union, and that actually, actually, uh, that's where the problem started, when police decided to break up their sitting, which had lasted for about a week. Now, what is the umbrella uh, uh, trade union, COSATU, saying about the whole situation, about the different uh, rival unions of the miners and also the clash with the police? Well, that's a very good question. COSATU has been very quiet. Now, COSATU is an umbrella union which actually sort of uh, it puts together different unions which are affiliated to it. The National Union of Miners being one of them. They've been very quiet, but what it actually shows is this, that um, the COSATU or the National Union of Miners monopoly on the workers is actually being challenged and it's been successfully challenged by much more radical unions. And this union actually says that they've got no political connections or to any, they're not po connected to any political party, nor to anybody. They're just an independent union. Mm -hmm. Yes. And now, what, what has been heard from the government in Pretoria? Well, uh, President Jacob Zuma has condemned the killings and he's actually cut short his, um, his stay in Mozambique, as your reporter said. And basically, there's, uh, there's a call for uh, to the establishment of a commission of inquiry to actually say what actually went wrong and who was actually responsible for the brutal killing of these workers, who basically they were having a sit-in. Was there a reason for them to be dispersed? They have been sitting in for about three days. They're not threatening anybody. Mm -hmm. Well, Isaka, thanks a lot uh, for that information. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, journalist Isaka Homo of the South Africa Broadcasting Corporation speaking to us from Johannesburg.